Hey everybody, good evening. Good evening. How y'all doing today? Good evening. I am going to share this broadcast with quite a few people. I know people are home, they're cooking, they're doing all kinds of things at home. So I wanna make sure that they don't miss tonight. Share this with a few people. You know what? Let me share this in here too. Yeah. I hope everyone is doing great tonight. I hope everyone is enjoying the pre-festivities of tonight. And um, yes, and there we go. All right, so I'm not going to wait, I'm not going to wait around for anybody to join because I know that there are some people who are uh, who's home who is um, they're preparing for tomorrow I am not preparing anything for tomorrow um, I am actually going to relax on tomorrow probably the first thing that I have um, been able to actually have time to relax in a while so i'm going to take advantage of tomorrow and i am relaxing i am going to just take some time i hope everyone is enjoying their family i hope you are cooking up a storm um if you're going to do something small just be safe if you're doing something bigger please be safe we still know that we are under covid uh, restrictions um around the world um so just be safe just be safe. You don't want to do anything that will make you rethink it tomorrow, okay? All right, so welcome to The Creative Overcomer. I am Stephanie White, and I am the lead creative of Rave Creative Impressions. Um, I am a voice for the creatives, training my ear to listen to the one and only creator. So this is not about me. This is really me just... Uh, sharing an experience and I hope that you're able to get something from it um, to find out more about me and what I do you can always go to my website www.stephaniewhite.com it's there pinned in the comments um, and you can also follow us on rave world 2.0 on Facebook Instagram and on YouTube if you have missed any of the episodes from this from from the creative overcomer all of them are uh, available for you to watch um, on YouTube under Rave World 2.0. If you're coming in, I want you to like um, uh, the post, like the page, um, share it, invite some individuals to come in and watch. I am here every night in the month of November at 10 p.m., giving you 30 minutes for 30 days. And I want you to engage with me, give me hearts, give me thumbs up, give me likes, comments, all of those things. If you can tell, I am in very good spirits. I am happy. I had a great day today. Um, I had a, a, a productive day today. So, And I hope that you had one as well. I'm going to get right into this topic for tonight. Um, if this is your first time joining me, again, you can watch all the other videos. Every single night there has been a different topic. Um, I do want to give a huge shout out to Tip, Tiff Top Jewels. Um, she hooked me up on the night. You know, I, I'm all blingy blingy. Um, go hit her up on um, on her page and you can find out more information about how to purchase from her. Um, all right, let me jump right into today's topic. So we've talked about everything from procrastination. We've talked about depression. We've talked about anxiety. We've talked about um, uh, overcoming a rejection. We've talked about so many things. There have been so many topics. And I'm. this one is just a different one. Um, that you never think that for me, like how 
um, uh, open I am. I'm, I'm only getting like this recently. I'm, I'm not, I've not always been this way. Um, it took some time for me to get to this place, right? So, and I hope you guys, I love this lipstick on me. This, this color is really popping on me. I'm going to keep using this. It's really cute on me. Um, so I want to talk about relations and relationships. And the reason I, I titled it that way was because um, it's not so much about the actual physical relationship. It's how you handle the relationship. How, like, what do you do? And for me, I mishandled a lot of relationships. And I even talked about un um, unforgiveness and one uh, particular thing. And I want to kind of bring a lot of those things to light uh, so that you do not repeat some of these same mistakes. Um, here's another introspective moment and I share these stories about me and I hope it encourages you to see a situation that I've been in as an example. Um, if you can identify with any of these videos what, with, regarding what topic it is, I want you to really take the challenge to, to really look deep and see that area for what it is. Um, I cannot... Uh, be um, and it cannot be everybody's um, experience with me um, that it's it's a problem you know like I, like they're the problem everybody cannot be the problem sometimes it takes uh, for you to check your own attitude and see exactly where you are um, in that moment so after experiencing so many negative relationships um, I have honestly been fearful of possibly allowing my heart to take a chance again. Um, I know what one looks like, a positive relationship, a healthy relationship, but I've not had one physically. And um, I have um, looked at all of the relationships in my life and I had to really think about it. Like there has been uh, a lot of unhealthy uh, practices in my relationships. Um, and it's not to say, um, that they had to be perfect, but unhealthy one. And it's not that I'm sad about it, but I, I do want to break the cycle of it. I want that cycle of unhealthy relationships to end. So I had to look at what the signs were for um, you know a healthy relationship. If you wanna know how to bake a cake, you look at the ingredients, right? Um, if you want to know how to ride a bike, you look at the instructions. So I want to look at the signs of what a healthy relationship is. So that means open communication. That means trust. That means um, that when you're apart from a person, like it's how they say absence make the heart grows fo grow fonder, uh, like you never miss a beat. Uh, that's a healthy relationship. You know how to be playful and light heart. Um, there's teamwork in the relationship and you handle conflict properly. Now, I've talked about this on another one uh, before about different types of relationships and anxiety and depression and, and things like that. But I'm going to touch on something different tonight. And um, so I, you, I gave you the signs of healthy relationships. Um, I did not know how to cultivate healthy relationships for years um, it would show every single time that I wanted to do something plan a birthday party plan an event um, uh, do anything um, I did not have individuals who were just like jumping at be, you know celebrating me and part of that was really my fault uh, because I was not open I was not willing to show up for other people um, I'll never forget a friend of mine had a birthday celebration and I was supposed to help plan the celebration and um, I planned it but never showed up. And you know, to this day, it bothers me that I, I, I could not put aside my own uh, things, that my own issues at that time to really celebrate another friend. And so um, I, you know, the ones that, you know, they showed up for me, um, but I haven't, well, I had not quite figured out how to really maintain that relationship because I didn't show up for them. Um, and I can't really blame other people for how they handled this, you know, me and, 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 you know, that kind of mind state. I can't, you know, I can't blame them if they walked away and was like, you know what, Stephanie was not really the great friend. I cannot blame them for that. Um, let me take a pause 
and I, I know I apologize in another setting, but this is to all of those individuals that I was not prepared or I wasn't ready or I wasn't trained or I wasn't taught how to really be a friend. And I mean a true friend. Um, let me go ahead and put that out there. I apologize for being that person. Um, I, I've never really wanted to be that, but I did not know how to go through life and life challenges and still be a friend. I did not know how to balance those two things. So my friendships failed, my, my relationships failed. Um, it, it, I just did not know how to really deal with them. So I know at that point, the person that I needed in my life was someone who uh, knew that when Stephanie shuts down, that it was because Stephanie has something going on and give her a moment and she'll come back. Um, those are the type of individuals that I need. And honestly, I have been praying and I've been praying over the last two years for, for God to really give me and keep those individuals in my life who when I get out of line, they know how to check me. They know how to pull me back in. They know how to say something and say, "Hey, you did this wrong," and I, I you like, I didn't like how you how it made me feel, and I, I really need us to have a conversation. So those are the type of things that I knew that I needed. Um, so at that time, I didn't know how to really maintain relationships. It was almost like out of sight, out of mind. If you don't call me, I didn't call you. Um, and like I said, I can't really blame them. Um, I thought about individuals that I, I, I invited to my wedding and even those who were in my wedding party. Like I had to think about it. Like how many of those people, how many of those individuals do I still talk to or do I really, have I really worked to uh, remain present in their lives or at least have an open door of communication as an environment. So I thought about it and it's not that many. Like I can count on my hand in my wedding party. I might still speak on a regular basis and check in with, I wanna say maybe three. And I had about 12 individuals in my wedding party. Two of them was my sisters. So yeah, four, let's just say four. Four. The rest of them I don't have. And they were in my wedding. So that means if they were in my wedding, that means that they were like individuals who are very close to me. Um, but thank God for a miracle worker. Um, he really truly came and he really did a heart transplant on me because um I I I I knew that a lot of what I was doing was very toxic and it was very toxic. I, I, I had a toxic toxic way of looking at relationships. Um, and just because I had not experienced healthy relationships um, before, it cannot be the reason why I did not know how to maintain a true authentic relationship. So I, have, I really had to check myself. Um, if the other person didn't do something that I like, and um, and this is even for you. If they a person does something that you do not like, um, you should be able to know how to confront the situation, resolve the situation without bruising that type of relationship. Uh, my best friend, and I'm sure she's probably not watching tonight because she's probably cooking. Um, but my best friend and I, we've had some really, really dragged down disagreements, and. Um, I believe that because I valued the relationship, it tested me um, to not allow anything to sever that. Now, I'm saying all of this from a creative standpoint as well, because for me, um, my relationships matter. When I was not in a healthy place, and I'll talk about that, when I was not in a healthy place mentally, um, I looked towards my friends and I'm going to talk about that in a second. And if they didn't do something that I thought was the right thing to say or do, I totally X them out. So my best friend, um, she did not like my spouse. Didn't like him. Couldn't stand him. And when I say didn't like him, couldn't stand him. Didn't like him at all. Like without an ounce. I mean, just none. Zilt. Like... Um, in the beginning, maybe the first, I want to say, month, she was cool with them. She was like, you know, okay, okay, you know. But then when she heard one thing that he did, she was like, ah, nope, 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 nope. I don't like him. Um, and so for me, I didn't want her to be the person to say, oh, I don't like somebody's relationship. You should leave him alone. 
Like I would never do that to her, but that's the type of protection that she has over me. And um, I wanted to learn for myself. Lord knows if I would have listened to my best friend, I would have listened to my best friend. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but instead, it really severed our friendship um, to the point where it was, um, it was just very difficult to come back. Um, it was very, very hard, um, uh, reconciliation period. And, um, we argued about everything and then it was got to the point where I did not even want to tell her anything that was happening in my relationship, anything he did, anything that if, if it was positive or negative, I didn't tell her anything. And um, she used to tell me that I had changed for the worse. Like I was not the same type of person that I, I used to be. And um, I did not um, even um, just do or, or, or I, my work ethic wasn't the same. Like everything was changing about me. And I didn't take the criticism well. I didn't. Um, I decided to just not include her in my life anymore. So I knew that there had to be something that I needed to change. There had to be, you know, a, a moment where I said, you know what? No more. I can't, I cannot keep doing this. Can't keep running in and out of my life. No, I cannot do this. Um, and it was more so me. Um, it was more so me. Um, well, I take that back for her. She, she put a nail in the coffin and she actually said, you know what, Stephanie, I, I can't be your friend anymore. I cannot be your friend anymore like this. And I was like, okay, deuce. Don't let the doorknob hit you. No, I didn't say all that. But I didn't I didn't look back when she walked away. I, I didn't look at it as um, maybe this is something that I really need to think about. Like, why is my best friend so strong about this, this decision? And why is she so strong about this? So I really had to think about it. And so now what do I do differently? What do I do differently now? I'm glad you asked. Well... The first thing is I don't rely on my relationships to give me that feeling of safety, security, and mental well-being. So that doesn't mean um, you won't get that from your friends, but I'm not setting myself up that if they don't do it, that I'm disappointed and it, it weighs heavily on me as if that person can never make a mistake. So I, I was putting them at such a high standard that they couldn't reach it. They couldn't... Like, I'm putting my friends, like, you should be like the friends on friends. Like, that's not what Ross and Rachel would do. That's not what, um, like, that Joey wouldn't do that. Like, I don't, you know, so I put them at a different standard. And um, for me, I had to rely on on really the, 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 real, the reason of them being in my life. The real relationship, like, why am I in this relationship with, friends and family. Now, you hear me talking about relationship when it comes to friendships because that's where my area was. I was not concerned about romantic relationships because for me, I did not care about romantic relationships. You're here today, gone tomorrow, I can care less. I never had a commitment with with romantic relationships. Um, I really honestly did not have a true boyfriend until I was actually getting ready to get married. Um, he was literally like, I want to say my, my first real boyfriend. Um, anybody before that, they were just somebody I was, you know, giving them attention at that point. There was never anything serious. So I, I, I really talk about relationships, um, and, and they're more so my friendships and my business relationships. Um, those two, I, I relied on my business relationships to carry the weight of if I called you and I asked you for, for anything that you would be on board with it immediately. And I could not deal with the disappointment of even someone telling me from a business standpoint, listen, Stephanie, I can't really do that. You know, I would really be like, well, it's me. Like, I'm always there for you. Um, so again, my first thing was I could not rely on my relationships for um, um, feeling safe and secure and my, having my mental well-being. The second one was um, knowing that challenges would come in the relationship, but it's how you handle them. Um, I'll never forget um, uh, being fired um, 
and I said fired uh, because I put my two weeks notice in at this particular job and I won't say that because they're probably watching. Um, I put my two weeks notice in for this particular job and um, later on down, well, I, well he, they were upset that I basically did not give them an opportunity to um, keep me at the, the, the job in the position. So they, um, the the person who I trusted at that job to really understand why I was taking this move um, basically said, you know what, pack your bags up. We don't need you to stay here for two weeks. And I mean, I was hurt. I was really hurt. So uh, challenges will come. It's how you handle them. It, that's, that really makes a difference. Um, third is enjoy every moment with that person. Try not to be a pain around that person. Um, for me, I was extremely exciting all the time, fun and adventurous. Um, and now, you know, well, during that period, um, where I didn't know how to cultivate friendships, I, when people would invite me places, I wouldn't show up. If I showed up, I really didn't participate or dance or do anything. I felt awkward. Um, um, I was really a bore. I honestly was I and it really was just because mentally I was just in a depression state and I didn't know how to tell my friends what was going on with me so instead I kept it bottled up and um, I just didn't want to be around anybody um, and it's very difficult for me to tell my friends you know some things that are going on with me especially since I trust them to that point because I, I used to always feel like I was going to get picked on or judged you know at that moment so um, um, I'm, I, I wasn't trying to be a happy person around them um, now I you can't get me to stay home you can't get me now to like if you tell me come and, and network and come and do something let's go out you know i'll look at my schedule and if i'm not tired if you tell me in advance now i'll i don't mind getting up and going why because now i understand that in order for me to develop relationships and to really be around people and to really have people know who i am like i have to open up i gotta be around them like i gotta show them that stephanie like i can i can get down with the best you know like that was a little ghetto but uh, I, I'm I'm not that stuffy person. Like I can be um, adventurous. Like I I went um, uh, skydiving on my birthday a few years ago by myself just because I just wanted to do something different. Um, that's the type of friendships that I I like or the relationships that I like. Let's do something different. Let's do something out of the box. We don't have to go to the same places that everybody else go. You know that's how I am now. Um, but it took me a minute to get here, guys. I'm telling you, it was something that had to break. Um, now I create boundaries. Oh, woo. I create boundaries and I share them with all of my friends. My friends know, all right, listen, I don't do this and I'm not doing this. Um, if you ask me to do something, if you want me to be a part of something, do not wait till the last minute and think I'm going to drop everything to come and help you. Um, and if I just cannot make it, I'm just going to be honest and say, you know what? I really am not feeling up to doing it right now. I mean, can we do this another day? Because for me, I have things too. There are things that weigh on me as well. And I know you want me to help, but I had to create boundaries. I cannot be um, Captain Save. You know the rest if you know. I can't save everybody and drop everything that I'm doing to go and help every single person. I can't. I'm one person. And every day, I may not really feel up to it. I may really just feel tired. But now, because I have a boundary, don't t don't think I'm going to uh, come. You ask me to do something. Hey, it. I need you at 6 o'clock. Can you come and help? I'm probably going to say no. No. Because for me, I plan everything out way in advance. I have a trip next week. My bags are packed already. Already. Today. They're packed. All of my stuff is enrolled in the suitcase. Everything is there. So I'm not a last minute person. So I, I had to make sure that my friends knew that about me. Um, that wasn't the only boundary. I got a few boundaries now. Now that I know what my boundaries are, there are a few. Um, but I've shared them so that and they don't have to guess um they don't have to wonder any relationship that i'm in you know what my standards are um if you're talking about being a, a romantic relationship with me if you are a cheater a liar and you still 
don't even call me. Don't even don't even try to call me. Um, because for me, that trust is already out of the window. And, and for me, I know the area of trust. Like I have to be able to see you on the other side and say, oh, I know he's all right. So romantically, I don't even have that kind of problem. Um, relationships are give and take. You should learn from each other, grow from each other, support each other, be involved. It cannot be a one-sided thing. Um, I've had too many one-sided relationships. Um, I have one right now and that's hanging on by a thread, but we're, we, we're good. But having those one-sided relationships, honestly, for me, um, I've done it for too long. And I've, I've, that's part of my boundary. I'm not doing one-sided relationships. I will call you out on it. Hey, listen, I, I, I do a lot for you. I do, and it's not to point that I do for you, but I, I need you to meet me halfway. I need you to come. Like if you, if you tell me that you're not coming to support my birthday and I do all A, B, C, and D with you, I'm going to tell you, listen, I was really hurt that you didn't show up. I'm going to leave it alone and move on to the next thing. Now, the next time that th something comes around, then I'm sure if you don't show up, I've already said what I need to say. I know exactly where I stand in your life and I got to be okay with it. Um, so relationships are give and take. They are not one sided. You want to take risk. You want to take risk. Healthy relationships, you take risk. Um, and the reason why I say you take risk and the reason why I think that this is a part of healthy relationships is you cannot fault a person who's trying to develop a brand new relationship with you, a really deep connection with you. You cannot fault them for something that somebody did 10 years ago, five years ago, a year ago. Um, you got to take a chance. Just because you remember uh, something that happened doesn't mean that this person or these individuals are trying to hurt you the same way that that person did. So it's really a point where you are, it's a risky situation. You are really putting yourself out there and it really is a matter of is this relationship worth it? And that's a question that you have to ask. Um, the last thing is you got to be responsible for your own actions. Boy, I'm going to tell y'all lift this. <laughs> for me, I was not responsible for my actions. I was the type of person who was so defensive so defensive i i would do something but i had a rebuttal for why i did it man y'all don't understand these topics it don't just hit y'all it hit me like it that slaps me in my face i honestly um was not responsible for my own actions i really did not know how to um hold myself accountable that's the word. Hold myself accountable for my actions. So I had to learn how to apologize across the board, whether it's relationship, business, um, I mean, uh, romantic, friends, whatever. I, I had across the board, I had to learn how to apologize and not, I'm sorry. I apologize for whatever that was that I did. I apologize because I know you're telling me now I offended you. I never meant to offend you. Um, I apologize if I said something to upset you. Now you cannot get me to stop apologizing. I will apologize even if it was nothing for me to apologize for. Why? Because now I don't want that weight on me. I don't want to hold on to um, uh, something that I did, have that weight on my shoulder because I offended you. I will be quick to apologize. Right now, anybody who's watching, if I did anything, I'm sorry for it. Please tell me what I did so that I can fix it. I can correct it. Um, that's for me now. I'm responsible for my actions. I had to learn how to even accept apologies. And when I mean accept apologies, not hold grudges. When somebody tells me, you're, I'm sorry, I apologize. I cannot go back and say, you know what? I heard what you said, but I just don't want to be friends. I, I just don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want you in my space. No, that what's the point of them apologizing if I'm not accepting the apology? Don't hold grudges. Man, I'm telling y'all, 
that weight of grudging and uh, unforgiving that weight alone is enough to stop every bit of your creativity that weight alone is enough to stop you from really um moving to the next level i don't want that weight that's too heavy i don't want that um if the relationship is not what it used to be this is what you have to do you have to check and make sure that it still has a pulse before you toss it away i have been adamant about that lately now is this relationship worth it? We can't be so quick to toss people away because they did not do it the way we liked it done. Um, it might be that you have been so stuck on one particular way, but um, there is another way. There's multiple ways of doing things. Just because they don't do it your way does not mean that it's incorrect. So these are things I had to check myself on. These are ways that I now think when it comes to relationships. These are, this is what I now put into practice because I want more than anything healthy relationships. Um, there have been individuals in my life who might have hurt and harmed me um, to the point of you know I'm, I'm crying in tears. And still to this day, I, I know that I've gone back to them and I've, I had to tell them, hey, this is what bothered me. And if they decide to apologize and fix the situation, then guess what? It was worth it. It was worth it. Um, here's a challenge. Here's a challenge. Um, here's a challenge. Ephesians 4 and 10 says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. I am challenging you all and I challenged everyone last night to take some time over this holiday to really, really um, love on, on the people around them, to hug more, to show the intimate side of themselves because you just never know who really needs to see that side of you. You don't know who really needs to glean from that side of you. And even when it comes to, to relationships and really understanding what that relation in relationships is like how do you relate to this person why is this person in your life for me honestly the individuals that are close to me now whether professional whether social there is a value to our friendship um i recently just went through my phone and i started to delete people from my phone because they're they're taking up space in my phone and i want people with authentic relationships i want that's what i want now I want authentic, healthy relationships. And I believe that if I do these steps, if I continue to look at myself introspectively and, and really uh, see the areas that I have struggled and overcome them and really get past the bitterness, get past the, the fear, get past the hate, get past the animosity. If I can get past all of those things and really, really, understand the value of friendship, the value of relationships, then for me, everything that I do, everything that I touch, everything that I am about will begin to skyrocket. And I can believe that. I believe that. I believe that with so much um, in me. And this, the, the scripture again, Ephesians 4 and 2, be completely humble and gentle it means I don't have to have a heart and heart all the time. I don't have to have that. Like, um, I can be patient, bearing with one another in love. If I know how to give it, then I'm sure that there's somebody who's ready to receive it and they are going to give it back to me. And if they don't, my life is not dependent on that anymore. I got to give people room to, to make error, room to to really understand the value of relationships. And if they don't, then guess what? That's They're not meant to be in relationship with you. So it's not a big deal. It's okay. It's all right. You will live. Tomorrow you'll wake up and breathe, I pray. Even if this relationship doesn't work. All right, so I hope that that was a good spill. I hope this helps you on tomorrow when you're going around to different households and if you're doing that, I hope you're being safe about it. But I hope that you take a look at your relationships and really understand the value in the relationships. If you've missed this broadcast, it will be on Facebook um, on this page. It will also be on YouTube, Brave World 2.0. You can always go to the website and you'll see um, some things there. 
www.stephaniewhite.com it's right there below um listen guys i have a few more nights to be with you i have a few more nights to really share some things that i've overcame over been able to overcome and um i'm excited that as as i am sharing these things that you are able to um experience and share with me and even overcome with me right along with me so I hope you're healing. I hope that tomorrow you 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 don't eat too much turkey or whatever you're going to eat. Um, I hope you enjoy your, your family. I hope you enjoy everything about tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, I meet me here tomorrow. Another topic at 10 p.m. I, I know it's Thanksgiving, but I said that I was going to do every single night. So I'm going to do every single night. I can step away for a moment to give you 30 minutes. I promise you 30 minutes and 30 days. So I'm going to give that to you again. Thank you so much for joining me for another night. It's the night before Thanksgiving and the pots are stirring. I know. Um, and I'm going to end this like I end every single night, how I uh, get on here every single night. And I have the same mantra and I hope that you have gotten it in your spirit and your heart. Um, but if you don't do it, who else will? Because nobody can do what you are purposed to do like you. So be creative, be unique, and be purposeful. Until tomorrow, join me. Join me. Join me for another night, another night, another topic at 10 p.m. Have a great evening and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Have a good one.